So I'm Esther Dyson, and by way of disclosure, I'm an investor in all three companies up here. I, I tried to get Google and Facebook and Blecko, but uh, I was able to persuade these guys with, uh, for whatever reason, they, they consented to come. They're all really interesting companies. The title, Search Beyond Search, we're going to talk about what's happening next in search. The, the purpose of search, people don't really want a list of links to websites when they search. They usually want to do something. They want to get something, book something, uh, prove something, find something, go somewhere, buy something. Bill Gates once said at dinner, the future of search is verbs. And I think that was, it's amazing it didn't get more widely quoted. Each of them is going to not introduce himself, but Ilya is going to introduce Mark Dowd of WOWD. Sorry, Mark Drummond of WOWD. It has been a long day. Mark's going to uh, fix whatever Ilya got wrong and introduce Gil Elbaz of Factual. And then Gil is going to introduce Ilya Sigalovich of Yandex. And then we'll have some, some little debate, and with luck, we'll have time for your questions. Uh, we're going to start, because we're short of time. So Ilya, over to you. So I was asked to, uh, to describe Mark. And uh, actually, I'm a user of his application, uh, the application uh, that is called also WOWD as a company. Uh, I know that Mark before that was a uh, writing program for NASA, for space. But uh, I use WOWD and I like it very much. It's kind of an um, alternative client for social networks. It does uh, several things in one box. It does a uh, very nice ranking of your feed, uh, very alternative and kind of with a, with a focus on relevance. It does a very nice search. Uh, it's actually a distributed search system. Uh, all those clients also are peer-to-peer -peer nodes in the search system, a very smart one. Uh, I love the feature that, uh, that actually divides uh, your friends into groups, and I think this is probably the best one. i never seen such beautiful, I mean, clean and clear clustering, uh, clustering of friends, so you can actually kind of, I, I, I have huge Facebook, and uh, it's easier now for me to see uh, different group of people, uh, different streams of different group of people. So I love this application, and uh, I like uh, Mark very much. I know him for about half a year, so thank you. And there is a slide somewhere if somebody right. will put it up I'll for you. So that I can see the slide, if that's okay. So th there's absolutely nothing to correct that. I, I was prepared to say the important thing to remember is that I was acquitted by a jury of my peers, but that never came up, so uh, I think we're okay. Uh, I would encourage you, if you feel like you're overloaded by uh, updates in Facebook and, and soon Twitter, to try WOWD because that's the idea there, is it's social search, meaning cutting clutter in social networks. But today, I wanted to talk about three higher level issues in social search. So if we could click once, we'll see three bullets on this slide. One slide apiece in One slide reference to the with time. three bullets. It's really... So the picture is intended to suggest disruption. Black Swan, exogenous events, things are clearly happening in search. And search, as it has been traditionally considered, uh, has to change in response to a bunch of these events. So again, we need some, some text, but I'll continue to speak as though the text were actually there. So the first point is that we're basically at an Alta Vista moment for Google. If you're familiar with what Alta Vista was doing when Google came on the scene, Alta Vista said, we'll use these IR metrics, information retrieval me metrics like TFIDF and other things to characterize what a page is about. And Google came along and said, it's actually more important to analyze the graph of web pages because that tells you what other people think pages are about. And if you do the math correctly there, in fact, I wouldn't normally mention this, but since we're in German, uh, Germany, and, and there'll be a bunch of German speakers here, the right term is eigenvalue. So you're actually computing an eigenvalue in what turns out to be the connectivity matrix for the page graph. That is the right way to do it. That's essentially what PageRank does. That is being crushed under the weight of content farms. And so Google and other traditional search engines have this issue. They want to get the best attention signal that they can. And that attention signal really lives in these social graphs. So the graph at Facebook, the follower graph at Twitter, the graph at LinkedIn, these all carry information about essentially ranking. But getting access to that is hard. If you use the Facebook API, if you use the Twitter API, you don't get all the data. 
So there's a big change coming there in the sense that the existing methods for doing ranking are so thoroughly gamed that they're not delivering very good results, and yet the real signal that everyone knows that you have to use is not available through the APIs and it lives in these walled gardens. So that's one point, hopefully bring up some discussion. Second is that people are increasingly moving outside of traditional reference search. Some people call it search outside the box. They're not going to Google to do a reference search. Instead, they're going into social media to see what their friends think. And that brings us to the third point, which is, what is that experience, really? So I'll give you three kinds of examples. One is a traditional question answer site like answers.com. I don't know if Bob Rosenshine is here. Maybe not. He should be. Because uh, answers.com is a very good example of this. Quora is a new one. Um, that is a, a model where you go, you ask a question of people you don't know, and hopefully get back a good answer. Uh, there's also what's called the social query model, which is what Aardvark did, where you ask a question, and it is supposed to be routed to subject matter experts, and eventually an answer will be routed back to you. That never actually worked for me in Aardvark. I was asked a lot of bizarre questions. And then there's what I see a lot of people doing inside their Facebook account, which is using their status update to say, hey, I'm thinking of buying these shoes. What does anyone think? Or as I asked recently, I'm thinking of looking at this, getting this randonnée equipment or alpine touring equipment. What do you think? That's not really the right way to do it. In fact, what you're trying to do is balance between your knowledge of the people, their subject matter expertise, and their knowledge of you. So the people that recommended the best uh, randonnée equipment to me were people who know how I ski and where I ski. So there's a really complicated balancing act there between finding subject matter expertise and, and some kind of proximity in the social graph, and it's not the traditional search experience. It's not going to Google, typing in one thing in a box, and maybe doing some query or find around that. That's what I think of as ballistic. It's sort of bang, bang, you type something in, you get some answers. Type something in, get some answers, or a list of links. So I think that process has to change. I just wanted to raise those three issues in terms of search changing in the context of a big blackbird. Now, I get to introduce... You have to introduce Gil. So Gil and I go back minutes and minutes. We know each other quite well. Uh, I would like to highlight three things. Uh, one is his company, Factual, is an amazingly cool company which does a lot of plumbing so that you don't have to. They collect data, they normalize data, they clean data, and they provide APIs so that you as a company can just issue calls against those APIs and get high quality data. This reminds me of the old adage, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. You would look at this problem and you think, we could do that. I recommend that you not, and that you actually just buy access to their data instead. The other interesting thing to me about Gil is his background. He uh, founded a company called Applied Semantics, which is the foundation for AdSense. Not AdWords, but AdSense. And that's a really huge revenue generator. I personally think that we need an invention like that in the context of social media, because we need to be able to better analyze conversations to figure out what they're about. And then the third thing that uh, strikes me as important about Gil is his project on the side, Common Crawl, which not enough people know about. If you're interested in getting access to a public crawl of the internet, commoncrawl.org, right, is a very good source. So with that, let me hand over to Gil. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Gil, your turn. So I have a slide up now, uh, just introducing Factual just for, for a minute. I think, thank, thanks for the introduction. Um, Factual is trying to make the lives of developers easier by making data, structured data, good data available so that like open source software, management teams have realized that it does not make sense to re recreate the wheel. So companies, we believe that too much time is spent uh, curating, cleaning, managing fairly commoditized data. So we're making this data available through our, through our API, through download, through a number of different SDKs and wrappers so that developers can do what they do best, innovate, move qu quickly uh, for new opportunities, do a lot of sexier things like, like social and mobile. And, uh, and, and our deep technology is around, as, uh, as Mark mentioned, uh, cleaning, structuring, taking in many noisy feeds of information, uh, a, a model that, that incentivizes partners, an open model that incentivizes partners to write back to our database and provide feedback. And through that model, we, we believe that increasingly we're going to be able to provide the best data at the lowest price, oftentimes free, when, uh, when partners contribute back. The, the vertical where we've been focused on uh, is, is local. We have a global business directory that we're working on. Uh, one, one important partner would be uh, Facebook that's using some of that data for Facebook places. I now want to take a, 
a moment to... Well, let, uh, let me just ask you two questions to clarify. So your, your canonical user is a, use, a person, a user, and yours is how much do you serve consumers versus developers who have their own APIs and then present the data in an interesting way? Right, so we're, we're completely developer focused, so we're, yeah. we're not thinking about the interesting visualizations or ways of, of consuming this data. And uh, we have plenty of brilliant partners that, that do that, that job well. And mm -hmm. some of them would be, for example? Oh, some. Uh, so Facebook, I mentioned, um, Home Junction does real estate search. You want to know, you want to know the, the, the neighboring dry cleaners or, or cool restaurants or coffee shops that use that data. Um, Booya has a game called My Town. It's a, it's a, a game with a, a ch check-in functionality. Great, thanks. Just it helps. So now, so now you need to explain what Ilya does. So, right. Um, Ilya Sigalovich, I'd like to introduce. Uh, so had a, this, was your slide up there? Ever? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so now on to I Ilya. Um, I've had the good fortune to get to know him over this, over this weekend, long weekend. Um, going way back in, in the history of uh, Ilya, he, he was a math whiz that brought home a second place trophy at the mathematic, Mathematics Olympiad across the, the whole former Soviet Republic. It was, it was the deep shame he brought to the, the house of Sigalovich that, uh, that drove him, I think, in my, in my estimation, to, to create a search empire, uh, which he's, he's, he's done. Um, not very many people know that he, he started working on Yandex in, in the early 90s. He, you know, he suggests it was around 93. Interestingly, 93, if you go, look back, that's when Mosaic, was the, the first version of that was originally launched. Um, it was before AltaVista or Yahoo were conceived. Um, and there were, in mid-93, there were about 120 websites. So it was pretty amazing uh, uh, prognostication, I think, that, that led Ilya to, to focus on, on, on web search. Um, even fewer people know that the next year he built a proof of concept for Foursquare predicting the mobile and social webs, although it, it turned out it was a little bit of a flop because nobody could check in it farther than an Ethernet cable away from, uh, from wherever, wherever they lived. But, but it's still, it's still I, I've been very impressed. Um, Today, Yandex is uh, it's a very impressive story. Uh, battled Google very effectively and has an uh, impressive dominant position in the search and search ads market in, uh, in Russia. And I, I, I enjoyed learning, learning about that story. OK, defend yourself. <laughs> and the honor of the family. Not all facts are correct, I think. <laughs> At least 50% of them are imaginary. So. At least about checking thing is totally. <laughs> uh, so yes, we uh, we are the search engine in Russia. We started quite uh, long ago, and uh, we are uh, very much loved and popular in Russia and surrounding republics. And uh, we are full-fledged portal. We have lots of services around. And uh, when uh, Esther asked me to participate in this, one of the questions was how we. Um, structure our search, how we see the relationships between verticals and the generic web search. And uh, actually, the, the way how we look at it is that uh, the search engine are going wider than they are now. I mean, of course, they have the face problems, and uh, they also want to solve more tasks for users, such as kind of, I like this uh, notion that I, t I take from uh, Andrei Broder from CIGAR this year. He is a very bright guy worked for Alta Vista many years, he said that uh, the search now goes before search and after search. And I love this uh, notion, so I'd like to play with this. I mean, before search means that we, and search engine, needs to know as much as possible about the user and about the context. Because it's not only help you, uh, it, 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 don't only, it not only help search engine to, to determine correctly what your query is about, but also even such things like uh, when you start typing your query, search engine help you to answer going from 2.5 in general, uh, in general, 2.5 words per query about 10 years ago to 2.5 letters per query. So I mean, this all goes uh, way before search. I mean, 
the question, very interesting question is, will we, and me as a user, and you as users, will we ever trust search engine to the way we, to the degree we trust social networks? Will we ever kind of provide the, the proper context for a search engine? Of course it helps, but it doesn't help like on each query. It helps on a regular basis. And like your social circle will help search engine to answer your location, uh, particular time, your personal information, your queries, uh, your query stream. It all helps. But the question is, will we understand this importance of, uh, of this uh, context and providing this context for a search engine? I don't know the answer. Uh, another thing is going after the search. And going after the search is kind of re what, what Esther was saying is to help uh, solve problems, the real problems. And they, go from, they come from the real life data, from real life relationships and real life um, things, not from virtual sites virtual pages that looks like real. Uh, and a very interesting question that is raised uh, kind of last couple of weeks about Google search quality. And uh, I mean, th this is kind of really hard question because search engines work in, the re in reality. They, want, they compete with each other. They want to create as much search quality as possible. But the, they, they believe in some economics. They cannot sometimes go much uh, further than that. I mean. You, on a formal point of view, you look at the content uh, of a page and you see it's a good page. I mean, it is not the original one. It's not, it's not the provided by the real human being who was the author of this page. But from the point of view of, uh, of uh, getting as much uh, judgments as possible, good judgments, it's kind of not economical to go, re go, go real into real life. It's very hard. Uh, what we do here, kind of, we, uh, we bring as much real life as possible into the search engine. Uh, Russia is one of the countries where you can't find the real, real life information, real data information. You, you can't find uh, mapping, for example, for many cities. You can't find uh, addresses for many cities. And what we are doing, we are kind of creating this content. We are creating the, the real value. We are adding this value to the web search, and thus we are helping people solve the problems. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I remember when I first went to Moscow, Nobody put telephone numbers on their marketing materials. And I asked why, and somebody said, well, because you give them the marketing material and then you can sell them the phone number, which is a great freemium, premium model. Um, so we start thinking of questions because it is late and I want to make this interactive, but there's, there's a fundamental strategic question for quote the search industry, which is, are we going to have a bunch of things like Orbitz and Yelp and all these other companies, which are really very, very targeted domain-specific search engines, or are we going to try to have a single box where you put in your query and then, as Ilya said, the search engine figures out what kind of query it is, whether you want to book a restaurant or find out about cooking, uh, do you want to have the social filtering and clustering brought into the search engine, or is that is searching Facebook fundamentally different from searching the web? Uh, you you organize everything, so yeah. So, you, you guys want to comment? I'll sure. I have an observation, which is that really in search, you want to separate search as a technology and the components of that from reference search as a task, a la. Yandex does more than that, but the reference search piece of Yandex. So in search, there's crawling to acquire content, the construction of a concordance, which is done through indexing, and then query serving, which is conjunction management, trying to figure out uh, which pages contain a set of terms, and then there's ranking, figuring out what's good. So you can do crawling, indexing, query serving, and ranking in the context of very different user tasks. And I would say that, you know, say Yelp or other apps maybe deployed mobily, They'll be using search in different ways. And the question for each of those companies is, is there a brandable value proposition that a user can use to index that thing at a moment in time? Do they have a revenue model? And is the market big enough? Right. And, and if those three things are true, then they could probably figure out a way to bring search into that and use it. Yeah, but there's a real question. Is it a strategy question or an execution question whether Google ends up becoming a whole bunch of separate properties, or it 
encompasses everything. And I would ask the same question about Yandex and Russia or. So I think it's very interesting to look at the history of universal search. I would have thought that companies such as Bing and Google are even more aggressive about incorporating structured data uh, because I think it's been successful and, uh, and there have been various important fringe efforts to do a good job of taking these ver different vertical silos, whether it's uh, PowerSat, I see Barney over there, or, uh, or Wolfram Alpha, um, or Siri, which got acquired by Apple. Um, I'm not sure exactly why they haven't been more aggressive, but what I'm looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting some sort of inflection point when somebody figures out a more federated model where they don't have to own and control and curate all those data sets or buy all those data sets that, that it can somehow incorporate the best that every iPhone app or website out there can provide. Uh, you know, Yahoo has done some interesting things with vertical search, but that kind of got, got shut down um, prematurely, perhaps. So but, um, I, I, I hope somebody takes, on, takes that baton. So you think you can survive independently and just work with all these guys and play nicely? I um, mean, you know, assuming the search guys still command the, the majority of the consumer share, I think you're going to have to figure out how to incorporate. Um, on the other hand, the, but the, 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 counter, the counter trend is the iPhone apps where there aren't the horizontal search platforms that are real, have really emerged. It's really the vertical. Yeah. I, agree. I agree with Gil. I think, I think apps are the way for verticals to survive and to be present in the everyday's life. Like you can have Google for everything generally, but you will have something particular for like apps search, for example, or people search or whatever search like that is kind of very specific and not, not kind of web search, but more, more, uh, more your context oriented search. Uh, so what's but, left? Yeah. I, I, but I think on the other hand that, uh, there is a very huge web signal, uh, that should be incorporated into each vertical. I mean, and, uh, currently to have this web signal on a high quality, you need to actually kind of spend lots of money and have your own crawler, have your own like web search. What Gil is doing with common crawl is one part of the things to, to help all verticals live, I mean, in a way, right? But uh, generally, without this web signal, uh, you probably won't be able to be the best vertical. But anyway, the, the, the niche exists. I agree with, with what, what is said, that is kind of Niches, uh, niches, are ex niches exist and, and uh, verticals can survive. Yeah. What, what is a web signal? I'm not uh, It's me. like, uh, for example, uh, you will have app search in Android uh, marketplace, okay? And uh, you will never kind of find uh, uh, anything except that is set inside the Android marketplace. Uh, the reviews that are around in the web, the links outside of marketplace are not used for that. I mean, Google may use it and eventually, but currently when you look at the how iPhone search is done or Nokia search is done, OV, uh, this, and all verticals are like that. I mean, even, even like restaurant search, without a web signal, without the signal from the uh, gen general big web, it's kind of not that good. It's my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we are ready for questions, but I'll, I'll keep asking some myself if you don't rise to the challenge. Okay, yes, um, one, it's a small room. Why don't you just shout without waiting for the mic? Or the other alternative, if you have a question, come on up to the front, anybody else as well, and then we can uh, see you easily. I'm, I'm Axel Schmiegler from 7Load. Um, there was a, a, a side sentence, I, I think you said it, Esther, um, where you said, or on the slide, before search and after search, uh, now, you've elaborated on where the data comes from and, you know, what the context is and how you go across screens and platforms, app search versus web, web search. I'd like to know a bit more about the verbs of Bill Gates. So, what do you think, you know, what do you think happens after the search and what's the interface we need for that? How can we grab results and process them? You know, the okay. hunt, hunt and collect. So let me just add to that. The, the challenge, of course, is the future of search is many different verbs. And so the answer is going to be different for different verbs, number one. And number two, some verbs are very profitable, like the verb to buy or to book. And other verbs are much less profitable. So now I'll answer the question. Well, uh, maybe an observation. I was on a team when I was at SRI International that started this company called Siri. And we... Uh, almost related to what Barney was doing with PowerSet, had the observation that if you had a conversational user interface, 
with an intelligent assistant model, much of what a person would end up doing is asking the assistant to take action on their behalf. So uh, find me a table for two uh, tomorrow night at El Fernayo in Palo Alto as a single sentence could come back with a done, and here's your confirmation number. And, and that works. send the confirmation to Jim Breyer. That's right, yeah, that's right. I know you're having dinner with Jim. So that worked incredibly well in very focused ways, but it gets quite brittle when you fall off the edge. And it's not clear how to explain it to a person so that they have a brandable, invocable model of what it's going to do for them and when it will work. Can you say, for instance, what's the weather tomorrow in Frankfurt? Well, it turns out you could, but what's the connection between weather and booking a restaurant? Could you say, get me a taxi? Not to begin with, but then APIs started appearing where you could get taxi. So the universe of verbs and the explainability of those in branding terms to people is actually very tricky. So I'll just add that, um, yeah, when you think about verbs, the, the verb that people aren't, there's not a huge demand for is, is, is search itself. People are action-oriented, action uh, especially on mobile. So when I think about the mobile platform, I, it's, not a, it's not a surprise that, that people want answers rather than search results. Uh, and because of the smaller screen, perhaps, because people are busier, they have less time. Uh, and if it moves into, let's say, technologies, think about Google 411 that gives you uh, answers by voice. Uh, they, of course, they were never going to think about um, search results as, as the interface there. So, so it's in a self-serving way, certainly. I believe that uh, structured data is, is, the, is the future of, of a lot of apps. And, uh, and I look forward to collaborating with the companies that are doing all sorts of interesting question-answering technologies. I actually agree with the, with the idea that uh, on mobile, uh, not even on a mobile, uh, the search engine can provide the, the ultimate answer, kind of, I don't know, the word, word for this maybe to know or to, like, to learn, uh, kind, of, kind, of, kind of quick reference answer. But I would add something like, uh, except the buy, I would, I, would, I would add the word listen of you. Uh, because uh, lots of downloading questions, uh, queries are actually going to into the streaming direction. So you, search engine can just provide a streaming uh, as a response to a query, and it's a very big proportion of queries with this verb. Uh, so, well, call. You, you see the call there. You just click and call to, to a person you need to talk to. So all these kind of things are kind of coming into the search engine result page. They just We have a player on the, on the SERP right now, so you can, you can listen. You don't need to listen as already on Yandex. I mean, listen as yeah. And then many of them, of course, are also get me directions, especially on a mobile. So I wanted to make an observation, and too, based on what Ilya had said, that if you look back at enterprise software, you sell a six or seven figure package to an enterprise, it packaged up an unholy boatload of capability, like enterprise resource planning, and it would take you know, years to implement, and you know, five times that to, to actually surround the professional services, that functionality kind of breaks up or metastasizes when it moves to PCs, and you can sell less to more people. And then if you take that trend, you slap a ruler on it, and you say, well, what's happening on mobile? The functionality metastasizes even further. It does less, but people know exactly when to do it. They get in, they right. do it, they get the heck out. And so search in that context becomes a different sort of thing, really. Well, to some extent, search is dead. Filtering is everything. Because what you really want is get rid of everything else. Just give me that one little answer, that one restaurant. Right. I think whatever. filtering and recommendation. Yeah. And here's here's exactly. um, say who you are. I'm a technology reporter. I uh, I I was wondering. We are talking about search all the time, and I think we are pretty good in understanding. Like the algorithms are pretty good by now in understanding the data and the contextual information that comes with meaning because it's quite hard to access language and meaning really. But I have the feeling that search is, uh, the next big step would be the same that uh, Steve Jobs did to the iPhone. This is when, when you look how people use wealth from alpha, they have a really hard problem in understanding what they can ask. They are so used to Google, they are so in the Google universe that they don't know how to search in any different way. And I have the feeling that the next big step in search will come if a search engine would really understand to take the user by the hand and tell him this is the way we navigate you here, 
this is how you could search in a different way. So I have no access to any inside knowledge on this, but my guess is that that's why Apple bought Siri, because my suspicion is, and again, not from talking to anyone at Apple, that they would like to factor those conversational user interface capabilities into things which all apps on the iOS can use, so that in some specific task context, information context, you could have an app having a dialogue with a person which might otherwise look like a search, but doesn't need to. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, would, I guess I would just add, um, I mean, Wolfram Alpha definitely opened my eyes to how much the bar could be raised with search. And it's true that a lot of people come there and don't ask the right questions because uh, Wolfram Alpha focuses on certain verticals that maybe aren't so mainstream. But in my, you know, my opinion, if there were 10 Wolfram Alphas, that each focused on their verticals and, and, and could offer a federated search, it would be quite, quite, quite formidable. Does uh, Wolfram Alpha use you guys? Not, not yet. I'm not sure I'd even call it search. I mean, not that it really matters, but I think search kind of almost disappears into a variety of these different verbs. And the challenge is the machine doesn't necessarily know which verb you're after when you show up. Ilya. Well, uh, I just think that uh, the way how to, 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 to work with this is to, to observe behavior of users uh, on the search, uh, search engines. And the search engine doing it all the time. I mean, maybe, maybe not too successfully, but at least they try a lot. So how much, we, we have one more question, and unless anyone else raises their hand, uh, oh, and Barney as well, okay. Anyone else? because this is your last chance. This gentleman and Barney and, ah, three, okay. Uh, finish. That's it. I mean, yeah. I, I, okay, I so it. let's have all three questions together and then the each, of these, the each of these people can decide which question he wants to answer, or maybe all three of them in some stunning closing statement, but go ahead. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. I'm Non Dekel from uh, Israel. Would it be fair to say that the word search is not relevant. Uh, in a sense, the search engines out there are creating a database of knowledge. Um, and in a sense, for me as a consumer, at the end of the day, what I'm interested in is, as you were saying earlier, is getting things done. I don't care where I do it. I don't want to go to a browser to do it. I, might want, I, I don't want to go to an app to do it. I just want whatever system I'm working with to be able to extract knowledge from the existing database on the, on the, on the cloud to enable me to do it. Okay, thanks. Question one. Question two. Barney? I'm uh, Barney Powell from Bing. Um, so my, my question really is for uh, Ilya, and uh, the topic is there's these, uh, you know, engines like Yandex and sort of regional engines, localized engines in some major countries have managed to withstand severe competition from sort of these sort of major big players. So kind of what is it about Yandex and if you can maybe generalize, what's the kind of knowledge or capabilities or difference in there that's enabling you to sort of stay sort of differentiated and, you know, and independent? And what can we learn about that for maybe the future of search more generally? Thanks, and then the third one in the back. It's very easy. So the, the Google paradigm is we search in one search box for text, another one for pics, and in a different website for videos. Um, do you believe in combining all of that content in one search engine? And how could that be done? Okay. I'm, interest, I'm interested in Ilya's answer to Barney's question. I'd like to hear that. Okay. So I think uh, it's a complex answer. It consists from different uh, parts. And uh, one is uh, Russia has very strong and uh, uh, history of uh, technology and uh, technology culture and uh, lots of mathematicians and, and uh, scientists and computer scientists and uh, actually we are very proud of uh, what we can do with what we can do. I, I myself uh, was grown up in, uh, in a computer center kind of. I was uh, eating my breakfast every morning in computer center so uh, and uh, that was uh, a, a part of our culture and uh, uh, we didn't even think about uh, waiting for some uh, Western search engine to provide us a uh, relevant, uh, uh, relevant mechanism. So it was actually pretty bad in 97, 98. I, until 2003, none of uh, Western search engine uh, cared about uh, language uh, uh, in many and most of the countries, actually. I mean, 
so there was no way uh, to wait. We had to provide a uh, high quality service. So we were doing it. We didn't even know that. Uh, I mean, I, I couldn't answer your question if you asked me that time because it was uh, irrelevant. Uh, there was no good Western search engines in Russia. So that's uh, part of it. Another part, yes, of course, there is a language difference. Uh, there is a cultural difference. Uh, lots of uh, lots of small and big things that we are doing quite independently and uh, staying popular and um, so it's kind of... Actually, there is a nice core discussion about it, so I can point to that. <laughs> and, and as my brother George said earlier, search is now once again, or computing again, is becoming analog in some sense and, and culture does matter more. That even if there's all that math at the bottom, using the math in a way that understands the culture makes a big difference. I maybe had an observation about this uh, uh, splitting out into different verticals of search. If you think about social search, for instance, and you say, well, what am I searching for? Am I searching for a web page? Am I searching for a product? Really, I'm searching for a set of opinions about a product. So it seems to me that what Bing has done, for instance, in terms of hooking up to the public Facebook API, doesn't actually solve the problem that I have there because I will search for, let's say, Audi R8. And in the off chance that one of my friends has liked a page which makes it into those search results, I'll see that. But that's such a sparse environment, it's just shooting off into the ether and I'm not gonna hit anything. That's been my experience. Whereas I might want to search for that thing broken out ontologically as a product and then do some kind of cascade through my social networks to find people who balance off to me, between my knowledge of them, their knowledge of me, and their knowledge of this subject, the Audi R8. And it doesn't feel to me like that's the same kind of thing as searching for web pages. That's just a very different task. Yeah, you need to crawl the social graph rather than the web page. Uh, I'll, I'll respond to the, the third question about, uh, I think it was about, um, is search relevant when people really want um, decisions or answers to their problems? And I think, I think we're not there yet, unfortunately. Um, the, the, the promise that the big, the big search engines make is that no matter what question you ask, they're gonna do a pretty good job of, of helping you. And nobody's figured out a universal domain model that can answer, get anywhere close to answering every question. It's kind of the holy grail of a, a lot of the computer scientists out there. So, it, it's, so search is gonna be relevant for a period of time. I mean, I'm still optimistic that there's a unique a, a new model, maybe a small pieces loosely joined model that can, can get there, but, um, but I think it, it takes a lot of people want it, wanting to get there. <laughs>